Hi, I'm Peter Haddock, and I'm here today at the Flannery HS2 facility with Steve Bradshaw from ATE. Steve, you are a UK manufacturer of this beauty, which is your Tomei brand. We've come here today, thanks and courtesy to Flannery, to actually test it out and put this machine next to us on this trailer. But this looks crazy. I mean, there is that much going on here, Steve. Tell me all about it because this is all about customization and you normally find you customize a luxury car. It looks like this is a customizing a luxury trailer, Steve. Come on, what's going on here? Absolutely. Well, thank you very much, Peter. It's an honor to be here and it's a real privilege to be able to use this facility at Flannery's today. As a company, Tomate, which is a brand of ATE, has really been developed from the customer upwards. We've never been a trailer manufacturer up until now. We've always understood how to distribute spares and we've always done it for other manufacturers, but a lot of customers are asking us saying, we want a trailer that is an innovative product that has health and safety features at its heart, and we want to be able to load diggers safely. So we thought about it and we decided, yeah, there's an opportunity here. So we've developed this trailer with a number of features and the trailer we have here today is, you might say, the top of the range. It's the ultimate one. It's I the think ultimate. it's the ultimate. I mean, look, you've got cages here for buckets for things. You've got winches. You've got a really crazy looking sort of bottom floor element. You've got all of this tailgate here with the handles on and this specialist system that allows you to take it down safely. You've got these things here which you can sit on, you can stand on. You know, so tell us, what's the thinking behind this particular model and what we can do with it? Absolutely. So this whole model was designed to be a, a, a trailer that an operator can load extremely simply yep. without having to worry about ratchet straps. And then the digger is safely secured. They can just drive off in less than five minutes. So you've got here, and I notice you've got a couple of trailers in the range at the moment. The one that's very stripped back, yep. so you can get rollers on it, and we've got rollers on it earlier today, folks. But this one here, it's got a lot of different added features. So first of all, let's talk about this feature here. It's like, quite like a step to me. Absolutely. Um, and obviously, you're going to have tracks from excavators coming underneath that. Yep. What's that all about? Sure. So it's really to aid the safe entry of the operator into the cab. Yeah. Clearly, they've got to step over a track. A track can often be muddy, slippery. Uh, there's a big trip slip hazard. Yeah, um, So we've covered the track with this step. So that's a really nice way of end of the day, generally. You're taking a clean machine like we've got here. Yep. Uh, but at the end of the day, you've done a lot of hard work. It might have been raining. It does rain a lot in the UK, folks. So that's a safer thing. But what about the actual, you know, the actual flooring element to it? Sure. What's this green stuff? This green stuff, it was something that we just decided to try as a new material in trailers. Yeah. You don't normally see it in trailers. It's actually a product that's designed for walkways. So we okay. thought, well, why not incorporate that? It allows moisture, dirt and so on to actually permeate through the surface so that you're not carrying extra weight you're not carrying the dirt and the wet and so on that you would normally do with a solid floor. Yeah. Uh, it helps with pressure washing. You could leave the digger on and pressure wash it at the same time and everything will drain through. So that's quite useful. Tell me about the cage. The cage, Steve. What, absolutely. I mean, I'm, I'm assuming it's not just buckets we can put in the cage that you can do other things with that cage and transport other, other elements. Now, a lot of these guys that are getting smaller units now, Steve, they're going for quite a lot of attachments even some of them on small excavators like that going tilt rotators. So you've got to be able to carry that stuff, Sting. Absolutely. And carrying things like that is always a challenge because of the weight. Yeah. But what with the extra length in this trailer, being as it's 2.8 metre long, you have got the facility to store the buckets at the front. Yeah. But the issue always is, is where do I put my breaker? Okay. Do I tuck it in between the tracks? Where do I put it? So we've decided to come up with this contraption on the front, yep. which is a holster to hold your breaker. So you this is not a gun holster, folks. We're not six shooting here. We're actually saying a safe place to put your breaker. And that is a expensive piece of attachment kit, yep. isn't it, Steve? And so obviously secure it as absolutely. well, because when you are stopping for your lunch somewhere, you don't want somebody to be taking your breaker, do you? So that's exactly why we've put a cage over the top, yeah. so that it can be locked and secure. As you can see, we've got padlocks on it both sides yep. so you can lock your buckets or you can lock your breaker or you can lock both you can access them both independently because they actually hinge over each other 
Yep. We've also got a bar on the end here just to stop any sideways movement because you can imagine a breaker weighs 80 to 100 kg. Yep. You went around a corner too fast, it could potentially punch out the side. So we've put a bar in there just to stop that sideways movement. Yeah. But ultimately, this is the ultimate of the ultimate, really. Yeah, and what I wanted to point out, folks, here, is you've got a big system here, which is for the safe handling of the machine when you get it on the trailer. So we need to keep these things on the trailer, yes. <laughs> don't we? And what's this system here all about? Sure. So one of the things I mentioned earlier in the conversation was that we wanted to do away with using ratchet straps. Right. A lot of operators in the utilities markets know a strapless trailer they're after now. Okay. So the other challenge is that normally in other systems that are around, you have to reverse the digger on, right. i.e. reverse the carriage, yeah. which means that your dozer blade is at the back. Yeah. And in some manufacturers, the correct way to load it is actually drive it forward. Okay. And there's no system for that. Yep. So what we decided to do was create a system where you drive the carriage and the digger on forwards with your dozer blade in front in the correct manner. Uh -huh. The dozer blade goes in under here. I'm seeing that and now. And all you yep. simply do is push down the back, yep. there we go. it in, and away you go. Fantastic. I can see that now because it's got a little bit of a ridge on that, yep. Steve, hasn't it? And what the other thing where we're talking about as well is obviously when you can do that, you can use your bucket sort of holder for want of a better word here, but also you've got a really, really interesting way about loading and unloading the machine, haven't you? Yep. So folks, at the back here, we've got obviously the ramp, really super important. So let me talk to you a few points about this because I've seen it in action. So there's modulization there. So you could have these two ends there. There's a there's an extra support there. So you've actually got, for the bigger machines that weigh more, obviously within the tolerance, Steve, you've actually got the support there as well. But when you lift it down and you put it back up again, there's something special there that helps you, isn't it? It's, it's a bit like door assist uh, when you're in an office, isn't it, Steve? Absolutely, it's ramp assist. Ramp assist, so we've got, sorry, um, got that wrong, folks. <laughs> we've got gas struts that are mounted horizontally underneath, Yeah. but they are designed to take the weight of the ramp. Yeah. So that the operator has a minimum physical effort yeah. in order to raise and lower the ramp. Yeah. There's a health and safety issue. A number of instances where the tailgate has fallen and hurt someone. And obviously that's a big no-no in the world yeah. of health and safety. So what we've done is actually created gas struts. And the way they're designed is that they do work and do what they're meant to do. Yeah. And that is actually provide assistance, both lifting and lowering. And the other thing that is a big safety feature, folks, tyres and wheels so come on these bad boys are looking pretty impressive on here certainly on the premium model but what's going on with that element of it because obviously you know there's a big hefty piece of equipment on here yep. attachments and everything else we get a burst tire or we have a problem what have you done to make sure that everything's kept safe but also to make sure that that doesn't occur as often as it might do with a sort of more cheaper version for example absolutely so the standard trailer has got a stand 165 R13 wheel and tyre, which is perfectly adequate for the job. But we do find when going off-road onto sites and so on, that something slightly chunkier yep. um, is a better fit. It's wider in its profile, so it's lower ground pressure. It has a chunkier tread. So what we do offer as an upgrade, and it is shown on this trailer, is a 18570 R13 wheel and tyre assembly, which just gives you that extra bit of peace of mind, if you like, that you've got a wheel and tyre assembly that is capable of carrying a lot more than the trailer is physically capable of. So you're effectively over-engineering the trailer just to give you that peace of mind along with the fact that it will be much more robust in a construction site environment. What we've also incorporated as standard is five wheel studs as standard. Yep. So instead of the traditional four stud, we now use five stud. And that five stud configuration is the same across the entire range of tow mate trailers. And it's the same stud pattern. So it doesn't matter whether you take a wheel off this, you could actually fit it onto another AT trailer. Right. So you've got universality, yep. if you like, of the spares. Um, we've standardized on one heavy duty seal for life bearing which is what is more used in the automotive industry now, rather than the standard taper roller bearings. That just gives you a better, longer piece of mind. And then also we've standardized on just two wheel hubs. So again, the brake size is only two to think of. So from a spares perspective, when you're working in a servicing environment, the storeman or the parts engineers don't have to worry about what have I got to find now? 
they know with a tow mate trailer it's either this or it's this and that's the whole point of this trailer folks at the front we've got some really really heavy duty elements as well but steve you know this is what the tow mate trailer is all about isn't it what i like about this and it's pretty similar to what other people are doing in the automotive industry and now in the plant sector it's customization folks so this is the king on the block for the tow mate trailer but there's all sorts of different things that people can opt for and put onto themselves so it's a bit like build your own trailer isn't it so steve this has been a great trailer talk with you uh, it's this big boys meccano time for me look at all these bits you can put onto the trailer one thing though steve it's all about safety it's all about the operator getting to job, being able to do their job, being safe when they come at the end of the day and ending up taking their machine and their attachments home in one piece, isn't it? And keeping them secure. So that peace of mind, they wake up in the morning and everything's still there. That's it, folks. Trailers Talks are over. Thanks very much, Steve. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks, Peter.